When I was young, we had these crazy ideas. We imagined that one day we'd be able to stop rushing around and let all our work be done for us by robots. We may not yet have robots, but these days our homes are chock-a-block with willing helpers that seem to get more useful all the time. That's what this programme is all about. The mechanics of domestic life. Those willing servants around the home that help make life easy. As a designer, I love to see how these servants have developed. Sometimes they've taken revolutionary leaps, at other times simple refinements have come up with the goods. But they've all helped free us from the worst excesses of drudgery. I often talk on television about domestic problems. And here's another problem, Black Monday. Every housewife knows what that means. I'll give it some effort like that. It's work. I have a vague recollection of my mother's drudge-ridden working week has, has just been all graft, really. Um, and it seemed to be full of washing and dampness and lots of tasks. And as a little child, I seemed to think that, how did she manage to cope with that week? It was incredibly hard work. Monday began the week, washing day, and it did take you all day to do the washing. You had to be really tough in those days. People did work physically a lot harder. We didn't have any of the labour-saving devices that we have these days. One of the earliest pieces of wash day technology was this, the washboard. Simple piece of technology which mimics scrubbing your clothes on the old rocks in the old river. It's not a complicated piece of technology, but it was a huge leap forward because we could actually do our washing inside with hot water. Big advantage. And wash day was stood on its head by the dolly or posti. For the first time we moved the stick, not the washing. You would plunge that up and down. Um, often two people would work at the same time, which they called double possing. Oh. One up, one down. And this was the early form, really, of what became mechanised and um, developed into the washing machine uh, as we know it. Don't let all the steel and bright colours fool you. Even though it's driven by electricity, this 1930s model is still just a stick twisting in the water. In the affluent 50s, they may have dressed up the machines to give us our first sleek white goods, but the only technical advance was that they heated their own water. The 60s saw the supremacy of the twin tool, but even with an early timer, it still needed watching, tending, and looking after. Still a bit manual, we've still got this manual process, but this was the must-have product of the 60s. Hey, and away we go. Oh, it's evocative, it's all coming flooding back, I can feel it now. But the replacement for the twin tub would wash away all competition, the front-loading automatic. Front loaders were a revolution. Up to the 60s, we did our washing in a, well, a bucket really. The washing went round and round and round in a vertical tub. But in the 60s, with our fitted kitchen lifestyles, we turned that bucket sideways so that it would fit into our fitted kitchens. How does that work? How do we keep that water in there? With a front loader, we bung our washing into the drum like that and whack it inside and we've got an incredible rubber seal that holds the washing and all that water inside. And we've got this fantastic, nice, lifestyle, smooth white exterior. But inside, we've got this whacking great, great drum with a washing inside it that permanently it wants to get down, gravity being what it is. The washing wants to push that drum all down all the time as it spins round. So we've got two whacking great weights, top and bottom, to stabilise the whole thing so the whole thing doesn't go vibrating off. But I can show you in a much better way, really.
must have a proper look inside. Now here's our drum with all the washing in it, and here's down there is a little motor, and that little motor will get hold of the drum and shake it all about with your washing inside if it wasn't for these big concrete lumps here, which are counterbalances to stop the whole thing vibrating away. Oops, I've almost forgot my washing. Perfect. The greatest advance in washing machines is that they're automatic. We can actually set them to do the job and walk away. And this was originally controlled by a mechanical process, almost like clockwork here. It's a little device that we set it with a real positive motion here, and it sets all these little con contacts, and off it goes. Today, this is all done by a series of microchips. It's a microprocessor. But, and this tickles me as a designer, is that we need a, rem a remnant of an old technology to make us feel right. The control operates the timer, but the click itself does nothing. It just makes it feel like we're in control. We know what we're doing. Modern detergents, of course, and efficient washing machines have made washing much easier. But that still leaves us with the problem of how to get the clothes dry for ironing quickly and easily. In the 19th century, the best way to get your clothes dry was the mangle, squeezing the water out. Buttons were always a casualty, but the arrival of electricity made mangles lethal. Trap fingers became so common that hospitals ran special mangle clinics across the land. People began to experiment with other ways of getting your clothes dry. And as you can see, we've spared no expense on this um, dramatic reconstruction. Well... What I have here is a working model of one of the very earliest forms of tumble dryer. You put your clothes in here thus, hopefully they stay in there, and then we rotate, or they were rotated, over a burning fire. The electric tumble dryer was invented in America in 1938. But like so many things, we got it much later. And it wasn't available in this country till 1958. Rudimentary though this may look, perhaps a little bit too simple, it's exactly the same principle as a tumble dryer. All we really need to do is rotate the clothing so that hot air can get in amongst the fibres and dry it out and all the hot air and damp air can actually pass through the, the framework and away. Now if you'd like your clothes singed and smelling of smoke, that was obviously okay. But I think, I think you'll probably agree that the current electric versions are much more efficient and, and nicer to use. And let's, hope, let's see if that's dry. Oh, there we are. I think you'll agree, there's just one or two snakes to iron out. 